my planning and journaling friends welcome back to my channel today i have a very special video starting off with a very special headshot it's been a while since i've shown my face on this channel but i am so excited for a best and worst purchases of 2023 2023 was the first full active year i would say of me being in the planner and journal community, specifically on Instagram. Now, I feel like I need to make that distinction because in the time that I've started this YouTube channel, I've slowly started to see that there is a difference between the community over on Instagram and here on YouTube. Needless to say, thank you so much for being here, whether you support me on Instagram, YouTube, or both. This year has been amazing in terms of stationery. I've really fallen into this deep, deep rabbit hole. I have made many, 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 many purchases in 2023. Some my favorites, some influenced, okay, well, a lot influenced based on the time I spent on Instagram. And more on that later as we go through each category. I really, really tried to pick just one best and one worst purchase of each category. I am going to make a favorites, an all around favorites video for 2023. So if that's something you'd also like to know, because I can elaborate a little bit more on each category, then do be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications so you can get notified when these videos go live. So this one's going to be a long one, I'm assuming. So I hope you have this on while you're getting ready, doing some chores, just have a listen, and maybe you want to journal with me, but let's get straight into this video. We are jumping straight into stationary tools. This is a huge umbrella term that encompasses things like scissors, ink pads, glue sticks, post-it notes, etc. The list goes on and on. I just needed somewhere to put these things. I guess you could call it like office supplies. But the very first thing that we're going to talk about are tools. I had some purchases that I did at the end of 2022 and it was really hard to decide if I should include some of those things in this video because this is my first time doing a best and worst, but I decided to really just stick it through to January to December of 2023. So for tools, my best one has got to be an ink pad and it is specifically, where is it? The Shashihara mini ink pads. These mini ones are so great. Um, I love that I can hold them upside down and apply the ink this way and I find that the mini ones are so well saturated I don't feel the need for a big one I can have a lot more focus on a specific area of the stamp there are some stamps where I don't need to use the whole thing sometimes I just want part of the design or part of the quote and it's really nice to have this small one now going into the worst one, it's another small one. It's one I had first, um, and it was the Versa Magic Dew Drop. Now the reason why these, I would say, was the worst in my purchasing of tools is because there isn't really a good seal on them. Um, this first one I have, Niagara Mist, it just seemed like it started to dry out really easily. Then I had one that was way too saturated. I would barely stamp on the wooden stamp and it had ink seeping into all of the cracks and crevices and it, it made it really hard to clean some of those rubber stamps. So very inconsistent. Um, with Versa Magic, I have about three, four colors and... They all range between dry out of the packaging to super wet and some are normal. Um, just overall, not a great experience purchasing wise for um, the amount and quality of product I've received. The Shashihara though, I also have a good amount of colors. I think I've got about six or seven and every single one of them across the board were nice and saturated, not so much that you would get ink seeping into the crevices, 
um, but a lot easier to maneuver too. With it being a square, I felt like I could use the corners a lot better. With this dew drop, there is one point, and I don't think that you'd necessarily need four points of a square, but this also was really helpful. I just wish the uh, closing of it was a lot better. Um, I feel like because of the way that it closes, it's probably why it's drying out over time. I have another <laughs> purchase in the worst category, and that is these Nakabayashi scissors. I got these scissors because they were so aesthetic. Brown neutrals is my thing. I really liked how this looked. I honestly didn't need scissors at the time. Um, I got these because I liked how they looked. They would make really great props in my photos for Instagram. And did I use it for props? Not really, because when I th thought I would, scissors just didn't fit into the photo. Um, I really love how it's brown. Um, it was advertised to keep sticky residue off, and it does do that. It has a curved edge because as you cut, it's supposed to help propel the item into the scissors. But what I find is that it doesn't cut straight. <laughs> and that's an issue with scissors. Scissors should be able to cut where you decide it cuts. Um, I would be following a line on a photo collage I would make. And once it got to the curved edge, the pull of the item through the scissors and the blades would make it go a different direction and that's not what you want with scissors so i've actually gone back to the really inexpensive amazon scissors that i had before moving right along we are getting into washi my best washi purchase is this mr eggplants it's called thinking of you i first saw this washi in a happy mail that someone sent me they use this washi to tape the envelope closed and I messaged her right away. I said, I love this washi. I am saving it for my journal. I need to know what this washi is. And um, it is such a nice neutral. It's got all of these different organic lines and drawings. I love the scribbles. I love that it's illegible, but legible. I love that it's very um, handwritten, all these different abstract shapes and lines and circles and that followed a theme in the things that I was purchasing over the year. I really enjoyed this type of aesthetic. So one of my favorite washies, and I have a hard time using it. I, I do use it, but um, I'm using it sparingly. <laughs> and for my worst washi purchase, I purchased from a D stash it is I purchased this roll from a D stash it was one of those things where like oh, okay I'm buying this little bundle from this person anyways I might as well add that washi roll for two dollars and I could have used those two dollars better elsewhere I shouldn't have purchased this this is a washi roll of characters um, men specifically boys and I was intrigued by it because there's so many girl washi pet tape stickers. We don't see a lot of boy uh, or men figures. And so I do think it's really interesting, but I have never used it. I think I've used it once. I took a, a loop of the design, cut them out, stuck it in my sticker release book, and I've only used maybe one of them. Um, I forgot to preface by saying that none of these items in the worst category or worst purchase is because I don't like the design. I absolutely love and adore the design or else I wouldn't have purchased it. It's just now in hindsight, I'm realizing it's probably not my style. Um, I gave in to maybe an influence from seeing someone else have it, knowing that it wouldn't have worked for me or it isn't my style. So that are the types of criteria that made some of these purchases fall into worst purchase of 2023. So that this kind of falls into that. I was getting into more characters like girls, boys, um, even animals, because beforehand I was just getting stickers and pet tape for florals and greenery, things like that. So 
at the time, I thought it was really nice. I still do think it's nice. I think maybe it's the material. Maybe if it were a pet tape or just a pet loop, I'd use it more. But because it's a washi roll without a backing, I'm less inclined to kind of pull out a whole loop, cut the one that I want, and then what do I do with the rest of the washi? Um, because there's about five or six designs on this, and I don't love every character. Some of them I would definitely use, some of them not so much. Okay, so next one, let's get into pet tape. This was the year I really fell in love with pet tape. I discovered it at the end of 2022. I purchased my very first roll, and honestly, it was really annoying. I didn't understand why anyone would want to sit there and cut through pet tape and then peel the backing. That is impossible to peel at times, depending on the manufacturer of the pet tape. But I really fell in love with it for 2023, and I just kept purchasing and purchasing and purchasing. Um, my best one is coffee-related. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Not really. But it is called the... Mood Tape Coffee Time. There are um, a good amount of girls within one loop. I really love when there's a lot of variety in a loop. I feel like you can use the design a lot more without it feeling repetitive in your journal pages. And all of these girls I have found myself able to use. It's really hard when you come across a pet tape and half the elements you love and half the elements just don't fit in with your aesthetic but this one was an easy one for me to grab a full roll of one because I could share it with friends and um, share this or trade um, two I just love coffee so much I knew that eventually over the years if this was one that took me a while to use I wouldn't really mind because it's coffee themed and eventually I will go back to cycling through my coffee items the next one, you can see that it would be harder for me to use because it's very specific. It is the Windry Pet Tape, and the name of it is Sweetheart. I purchased this from a D-Stash. A lot of, I think there's a trend in my worst purchases, and they come from D-Stashes because I am a sucker for a discount. I am a, thrift, a thrifting girl. I love to go to thrift stores. I love to shop Facebook Marketplace. I love to go to garage sales before. So these stashes feel like the equivalent of all of that, but in the planner and stationery community. And it is really hard for me to say no to a good deal or discount, especially when something is new and it's, you know, marked down a few dollars because somebody else bought it and now they just want to get rid of it. So I purchased these sweetheart girls and it is just not something I would use regularly. I don't even think I've used a full loop of each design once yet. This design specifically, it is a little too romantic for me. I like to decorate what my spreads and journal pages are talking about with the pet tape. So I just don't talk, I don't write a lot about the kinds of images that would make me use this <laughs> if that makes sense like i have an entire journal about coffee so it's really easy to use the coffee one um i'm just not one to um, have a romantic floral aesthetic so having these pet tape girls around tea time around nighttime routine with flower crowns um holding a a bird cage. I just don't find how that would fit in with the things that I'm writing. So this goes into my worst pet tape purchase in 2023. Okay, this next category is stickers. Um, I didn't purchase that many stickers in general in 2023, likely to do with me discovering pet tapes, trying out different types of pet tapes, and getting into rubber stamps. So in 2022, when I re-entered the journaling community and found that there was such a thing as decorating with stickers instead of having to draw everything, I went really crazy buying stickers. Um, I also didn't have to buy so many stickers in 2023 because I was focused on using the stash that I had created from 2022. 
I did make a few purchases though and for the best purchase it is from a shop called Emma Stationery Hall, one of my favorite shops. But I mentioned the shop because she has a lot of very unique brands that I can't find anywhere else. This specific sticker set to brand is from IM. Uh, it's called Daily Life and it had eight sticker sheets for less than $8. So that was a great price point, number one already. Number two, I love the designs. They are around daily life activities. And for my lifestyle and uh, what I journal, these stickers are great. I actually have to stop myself from using all of them in one journal spread just because every single one is relatable. I really loved that the sticker set had two postcards. This one is the picnic one. The other one I have decorated against the wall of my desk so I can look at it as kind of like desk decor. I really love this sticker sheet with the handwriting as well. When I use these, I do find that I just stick within this collection because I don't have a lot of other things that um, match well with this. But because there are words, text, images, illustrations, it's really easy to create a spread just with this sticker set. For the worst stickers I purchased, they fell into the category of vinyl stickers. I'm not really a vinyl sticker girl. <laughs> I like to get sticker sheets and put them in my pages. I even before this, I never really wanted stickers to decorate like my water bottle or things that would need to be waterproof. I just don't like to have anything um, outlandishly decorated in case like what if I get sick of it, then I can't remove it. Or if I remove it, the adhesive is going to get stuck there. So I've never really been one to purchase vinyl stickers. Um, this is also probably categorized as my worst sticker purchase because I had to. I had to buy this. Um, I really don't want to discuss the brand, but I did represent this brand. And in order to represent them, I had to purchase from them. And this should have been a red flag. With this being one of my very early representative opportunities, I was blinded and just really wanted to get out there on Instagram so I agreed and in the contract of this three month agreement I had to make five purchases within the three months and advertise my discount code so others could purchase and if I reached a certain amount of purchases then it would uh, count as one of mine. So let's say I got 10 other people to purchase using my code. My uh, requirement of five purchases under my account would then go down to four. So I'm not obligated to buy five different times. I'm now only obligated four different times. And let me tell you, I did not reach any of those milestones. Uh, it was really hard with just a few hundred followers on Instagram. I thought it was a great opportunity and an inst and instead it just took money away from me <laughs> when I was never really going to get monetary, um, you know, payment anyways from that representation. So I no longer associate myself with the shop, um, but these are the vinyl stickers. I at least did pick some that um, I enjoy, like there's a coffee one. There's a cooking one. Um, so I really do enjoy this one that says, slow down, you're doing fine. Um, but I had maybe triple this before and I have since then given them away in Happy Mail. Um, will I purchase vinyl stickers again? Yeah, but I think now I'll purchase them to add into uh, clear covers for journals to decorate them without having to actually stick the stickers on my planner. So something I learned in 2023 is I, I'm not very much a vinyl sticker person. <laughs> okay, we are getting into the juicy stuff now. Some of the more expensive stationary items. This first one is about journal covers. 
Um, it just so happened that my best and worst are categorized under the traveler's company system, but I did think about, you know, my cover for my Hobonichi, cover for my uh, B6 that I just received. Um, even though I received it just in this last month of December, it still was in the running to be uh, best or worst purchase. So my best purchase is a Traveler's Company Olive from this year's release, 2023's release, but I customized it to have some Baumkuchen embossing, Baumkuchen charm, and then I purchased patches um, across different stores on Etsy to create my own little California patches journal. This cover is very special to me because it commemorates my hometown. I am very homesick <laughs> of my, my hometown, my family and friends, and having to be away from them these past two and a half years. And um, being able to create this cover um, is really special to me and it is my best purchase for 2023 in regards to covers even though it took a lot of elements to get this together I would do it all over again now my worst purchase in covers I do not have I have since de-stashed it that goes to show that it really was something that I shouldn't have purchased I did anyway because I had FOMO I wanted it just like everybody else um, and I bought it and then kind of tried to force myself to use it, boxed it up because I knew deep down that I should probably just resell this. So I boxed it up so it wouldn't, you know, age anymore or I wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't patina so much more. And it is the Traveler's Company Diner TN in standard size. So I kept the whole set together. I, I did stamp the inside of the insert with the special diner stamp, but other than that, I didn't use the stickers, I didn't use the postcard, I kept everything the same. I had a little bit of wear on the diner cover, um, but I was able to de-stash it fairly easily and for a good price um, to compensate shipping. But yeah, I... I, I don't want to say I regret it. It was my very first special limited edition purchase with Traveler's Company and one that I could make directly from them. I didn't have to purchase with a huge markup from resellers or from a D-Stash. Um, so it was a great experience. I was really excited when I got the Diner TN, but looking back... Um, the design and the theme just didn't speak to me, but I felt like I had to have it anyway. I felt like I had to be unboxing one when everyone else was unboxing one. And that is not how you should be gauging purchases for stationery and for your hobby and just to be using precious finances that could be going elsewhere. So I've learned a lot about um, FOMO on Instagram how things are marketed, the excitement from other people. That is number one. I um, get very excited when someone else is excited about a purchase. And so I really have to check myself all the times. Is this something that I really want or do I want this because someone else is excited about it and therefore I'm excited about it? because there's so much emotion evoked around this stationary item. Um, the next one is related to this sensation of FOMO. So this next category is pouches or cases. So this pouch is the Traveler's Factory Canvas and Leather Pouch. I believe this is the size medium. This one is a tough one for me to pick that it is my best pouch purchase. Um, I do believe that because it is so versatile. I love that it doesn't have to be for stationery. Um, it's a little bit more elegant and put together than let's say like the engineer pouch. I really love that there is a zipper in the back and this button pouch in the front. I just have it storing the uh, special edition <laughs> stickers from, from the uh, sets here. Um, but when I'm traveling, 
this is a really great pouch to have because it can hold your TN, it can hold ephemera. Because of its size, it can keep things um, nice and straight. So I do really love this pouch. I My favorite feature on it is the leather flap against the canvas. I think it is just such a nice combination to see the different uh, textures and I love how this wears down. Um, it's interesting because you would assume that they use the same leather in their notebook covers, um, but this definitely has a lot more olive tone, whereas the olive journal covers um, are leaning a lot more brown, um, which is interesting because the inside of this almost looks brown. But I would say this is one of my favorite purchases for 2023. Um, this one is technically probably number three overall. I had to force myself to not choose either of my Yuruliku cases because technically I purchased those in 2022. So be sure to follow and subscribe because in my favorites video, I will get to talk about the Yuruliku cases and why they are my absolute favorite purchases of all time so far. <laughs> but this video is about 2023 purchases, so I couldn't choose those, which is how I landed on this one. So for my worst purchase though, um, this might surprise some people. In general, my worst purchase for 2023 in the pouches category has to be the engineer size. So I have three size. It's not specifically about the color. It's more so I got my first one. I really love this one. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. <laughs> I could use it for so many other things, but I thought it was small. And I felt that like it was small and I continued to keep buying them. Like I already think it's small. Why do I think having three small ones is gonna make any of them feel any bigger <laughs> I I don't I don't know I don't know they do have bigger sizes I just couldn't justify the price of the bigger one um, so yeah that's another problem all on its own I really do love this mocha one I probably won't ever get rid of it but did I need two others no so worst purchase in the pouch and case category is probably going to be acquiring more of a small size <laughs> that um, fills up very quickly and it becomes hard to close. I obviously you can see I don't have these holding anything. I will I use these when I travel. I use these um, I will have one for stationary items. I will have one for personal items. These are really good pouches to carry um, hand lotion, hand cream, chapstick, your eyeglasses, things like that. So it is helpful, but in the sense of stationary, they just really don't hold all that much. Um, and of course, there's no like inner pocket, so it's just all like a dump in there. I've got stamps floating around, ink pads. So we've got three more categories. This next one is organization. My best purchase for organization has to be my three A4 plastic organizers. Plastic, acrylic, I don't know, I forget the material. I got them on Amazon. I was searching high and low for a lid snap combination <laughs> organizer that was shallow enough for stamps. I didn't want so much height that stamps could roll around as I'm moving things and transporting them. I was able to find a really great size. The problem is it came in three and it wasn't a problem for very long because my stamp collection almost doubled within a couple of months. And then when I brought it all back with me from California to Italy, I filled up the third one with pet tape loops and it was actually very very helpful because a huge majority of my pet tape collection are loops. I rarely buy a full roll unless I'm going to share with friends or I know it's going to last me a long while. So 
It has been a great organization tool. I really love it. I will have it linked in the description. Um, a lot of these items um, might be sold out just because they're on some special they're they're on specialty websites and imported from overseas artists. But this one specifically you can find on Amazon. For my worst purchase in organization category, it is these pen gear boxes. Um, I purchased these while I was on my trip in California during the summer and I liked them at the time. It was great to store uh, my smaller Kurukinki rubber stamps. Um, it had to be exactly like all one brand. So for example, I was able to fit all of my Kurukinki stamps in this. And then I bought more and then it bothered me that I would have a majority of the Kuru Kinky in here, but then I had some overflow that wouldn't fit. And so I would empty those out and find a different organization for them. And so now I've got all these things and don't really have a purpose for them. There is some random stuff now that honestly I have not looked at since uh, until now until i've grabbed these boxes to show in this video so i don't even know what's in here i think they're just stamped papers from happy meal swaps next is fountain pens for th this is not going to be a surprise to anyone <laughs> if this is a surprise to you and you've been following me on instagram i don't know like where you been <laughs> So for fountain pens, my favorite is the Sailor Pro Gear Cafe Crema, the German exclusive. I am so happy that I have this pen. I think it will forever be my most prized pen. I just really, really love coffee. <laughs> I love neutral aesthetics. The fact that this is brown and cream with a coffee bean finial. I was nervous about getting a fine nib. I've discovered that fine is my favorite nib size for everyday writing. I write pretty small and it feels very comfortable. The Pro Gear size itself, this is my first um, Pro Gear pen ever this year, and I love it. I have been spoiled now by the Pro Gear size because it fits my hand better. It's a lot more comfortable. So just Overall, everything. I love the look, I love the feel, I love the feedback, the 21 karat nib, the fine nib, everything. I just love it so much. So my favorite, favorite fountain pen purchase of 2023. Now my worst one, I do not have, I de-stashed it. Not because I didn't like it, but because it was a purchase I should have never made. Um, I purchased a Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the color Momo from the Seasonal Festivals Summer Collection. Is it summer or spring? I can't remember. But it was the very beautiful pink one, some very um, faint shimmer, but it was absolutely stunning. I had it in hand, I got it in a medium, but as soon as I got it, I didn't open it from the plastic um, thing. I knew right when I got it, it was a pen I should have never purchased, but I purchased it because I was sad that I couldn't get the Kubo Sakura Hachimunjiya Collaborative Pen. So that was my true Holy Grail pen in the pink family. I have a lot of Holy Grail pens, but that one was my favorite. It was the one that got away and for any fountain pen users there, when you have a pen that slips away from you, it haunts you, haunts you. So I thought by purchasing the Momo pen, I would get over it and I didn't. And then I had a chance to buy the Kuba Sakura and I did. And the minute that I did, I sold the Momo. So it was a purchase I should have never made. The pen itself is beautiful. I knew I didn't like Pro Gear Slims, so I don't know why I was still buying Pro Gear Slims. I was just trying to fill a void in my heart not getting the Kua Sakura. So that is my worst purchase regarding fountain pens in 2023. So didn't fit my criteria at all. I prefer the Pro Gears. Why did I buy a Pro Gear Slim? 
Um, I really wanted the Kuba Sakura. I could have used the money I spent on the Momo to just get the Kuba Sakura. Luckily, <clears throat> I got the Momo at a really great price and I was able to make a little bit of profit just to go towards the Kuba Sakura that I did end up buying. I do not have the Kuba Sakura yet. I have to wait for it for a few more weeks because, um, long story, but my parents have it and they will be giving it to me when I see them next month. Anyways, um, I think we've just got one more category here and it is inks, uh, fountain pen inks specifically. So my best purchase, this is more of an umbrella thing. My best purchases for ink was to buy samples, to not buy very many bottles. I am so happy that I um, just spent the money on samples. If you do the math, you are spending a lot for a milliliter of ink. But that uh, trial, that experience with that ink will save you so much more money in the long run if you avoid buying bottles. <laughs> so I myself found out that I like to change colors a lot <laughs> in my fountain pens. Um, it doesn't take very much for me to dislike an ink. It could be the way it flows in a certain nib. It could be that it looked very saturated, but then um, it, it could be that it looked very nice on a swatch, but then completely different in a pen. And so if I bought a bottle for, if I had a bottle for all the samples that I tried and didn't like, this room would be full. <laughs> I had, I think, a hundred samples this year. A lot of them were sent to me from Happy Mail, um, but I did purchase a minimum of 25 ink samples. And it was nice to be able to say, okay, I tried it, moved on, not for me, and uh, pass it on to another friend. And, I, and that's how like the cycle of trying out different samples happened. So my, probably my best purchase regards to inks is just trying out 4 ml, 5 ml samples, even just 2 ml samples, and get to find out what I like. With this being my very first year into fountain pens, um, I just didn't know much about inks and my preferences, so it was really... A good um, decision to get into samples. I do have a few bottles and I would say that my best ink purchase for a bottle, a full bottle, is Lennon Toolbar's Sesame Oil. Now this is a 2021 winter um, ex exclusive or special edition so it is a lot harder to find now but I found this in a Kinokuniya bookstore and I just had to jump on it. I was so amazed that they had it and um, it is the perfect beige brown for me um, right on the mark in terms of my aesthetic and so I have a hard time wanting to use this. <laughs> I think I've only had it inked in a pen on two different occasions. I've shared um, samples of it to some friends but one of my favorite inks that I'm trying to use slowly. Um, my worst one doesn't really belong in the worst category. The only reason it's in here is because I've yet to find the time and the pen to ink it with. And it is Waring Gold's Don Quixote. I had this in a sample and I wrote through that sample so fast. One of the first samples that I ever finished a full 4 mLs of. So I was like, okay, I finished the sample. I still love the ink. I still want the ink. So I might as well buy a bottle. I bought the bottle, never inked a pen with it. <laughs> I have done swatches. I've used my dip pen with it a few times. But since acquiring the full bottle, I have yet to ink a pen with. I did just get my newest, one of my newest additions to my pen collection last night. And I think it is a great match for me to finally use this ink bottle. So that's why I say it doesn't technically belong in the worst ink purchase of 2023. It's just that it's taken me nine plus months of actually using this thing. 
So that's the only reason it's really in that category because I wanted to pick something. I had to pick something. Um, so we covered so many categories. We Let's see. We went through tools, washi, pet tape, stickers, rubber stamps, covers, planners, notebooks, cases, pouches, organization, fountain pens, and inks. <laughs> so much. Oh, I skipped two categories. <laughs> I'm just realizing. Okay, tools, washi, pet tape, stickers. Okay, I skipped over stamps. I skipped over stamps and I skipped over planners and notebooks. Okay, we're not done. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not done. Okay, so rubber stamps. I fell in love with rubber stamps this year. It will come as no surprise again that my favorite and best purchase of 2023 was buying a coffee-related stamp, specifically coffee stains. I have them right here. These are Journal Pages coffee stamps. They have a, um, a collection of four. I wanted to get all four at one point. Um, at the time that I purchased these, they only had these two available. And I was really happy with them because they were different enough, um, but still part of the same collection. And I told myself I would collect the other two at a later time when they came back in stock. It had been several months of me using these in my coffee journal that the other two came back in stock and I honestly felt like I didn't have them. I felt that these two, when used in different orientations, if you only ink a certain portion of it, provided so much variety in my coffee spreads. So definitely my favorite purchase for 2023 because I love coffee, even if it's not specifically in my coffee journal. They could be ink stains, they could be paint spilled on a canvas table anything i just really love the uh, shape and design of these stains okay my worst rubber stamp purchase is actually this might be a surprise is a bomb coupon stamp this is a date stamp it's just a blank layout for you to write the date the day of the week um, a lot of um, open interpretation to display your date with this stamp. I just have never used it since buying it. I bought it, <laughs> buying it. I used it the right after, like literally right after we went to a coffee shop to journal and I stamped it because I was writing about what I purchased and I have not used it ever since that spread. I think I will eventually destash that because that's just how much I don't use it, don't feel the need for it, and it was something where shopping in person really got me. <laughs> so not only do I feel like I can't I can't say no to destashes, I also have a hard time when I can physically see the item in front of me, even though I know I didn't need it. I know it wasn't even something I was looking at buying before entering the store, and then all of a sudden you just get overwhelmed, blinded, and now you're like, I want that, I want this. <laughs> um, so last category that I skipped over, I don't know how I did that, is planners and notebooks. My best purchase in the planners and notebooks is my Hobonichi A6. This was a spring start. I did not intend on using a Hobonichi in 2023, but man, am I so glad I did. But man, am I so sad that I discovered Hobonichi on the last year that they had amazing paper. <laughs> I am using Hobonichi for 2024, but that sands in paper. Anyways, I am so glad that I pushed myself to give this a try. I had tried a Tomoe River paper notebook before purchasing this and I didn't really like it. That was a good way for me to familiarize myself with the amount of ghosting that there is with that paper um, that by the time I was really into fountain pens and using this um, it wasn't so much of a bother to me anymore this really got me to be more consistent with my daily journaling I didn't know that I needed something dated 
Um, now that I've got the discipline and the consistency, I am going to be using journal pages without a date for 2024, but I'm pretty confident now with my consistency that I will keep up with daily journaling. And I really have this Hobonichi to thank for that. So really glad that I took the leap in trying this brand. And now I have um, a Hobonichi A6 for memory, uh, a photo a day journaling next year. And I got a five year. That's just how much I really enjoyed it. Um, the sands and paper is a different conversation, <laughs> but I'm really glad that I picked this up in 2023. Now my worst purchase, a uh, fairly recent purchase, I got the Take a Note B6 um, during the September planner releases. I really, really thought this was going to be my planner uh, system for 2024. I got it, held it in hand, flipped through the layout, and was like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think, I was just so excited and got consumed in the planner chaos in September that I felt like I had to pre-order something. I had to buy something because everything else I was keeping the same. I knew I was going to get a Hobonichi A6. I knew I was going to stay in Traveler's Company inserts. Um, it almost felt wrong not having planner chaos about something and that in itself is a red flag already. Like, you don't have to change anything. You don't, there, there shouldn't be planner chaos. Um, but I wanted the chaos. I wanted to be a part of it. And in doing that, found a notebook that I thought, hey, that could possibly work for me. It was something I could be excited about. It was something I could talk about on Instagram and be like, I'm, so excited to try something new and guess what I won't be I tried to destash this uh, no bites so if you are actually interested in the comments you can let me know here on YouTube or on Instagram if the new year comes around and I still haven't gotten rid of it I think I will probably try to use it for something because I just don't like notebooks staying empty I would rather write in it and possibly abandon it than to just let it like be fully empty like this um because some sometimes it's just nice to scribble in something and the paper feels okay but i think it stands in too um so yeah worst purchase of 2023 was getting this taken out b6 during during planner chaos and because of this and just a lot of other things surrounding FOMO and consumerism around the planner community. I am trying, 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 trying to not purchase anything in 2024 for the next planner system until November. Planner season is around September. It's when a lot of the brands will release their next year's planners, anything different, anything new, and allow for pre-orders. Um, I felt like that was a little bit too early, September, you have four months until the new year, anything can happen in four months, and it did, I changed my mind multiple times, um, November sales were amazing, could have gotten all those things that I did in September in November and saved money, um, rarely anything sold out except for one, one planner did sell out, um, I did get it. But that is specific to, I think, more small business. So I, I'm going to be using the paper, uh, paper test designs. Um, and that is sold out now. So people who have discovered it and realized they want it to be their 2024 planner, unfortunately, there is no more. Um, so, but for bigger brands like Hobonichi and Midori, I will wait. I will not buy in September. Um, that is my goal. So... Come that time next year, hopefully I will remember, or you can send me a reminder. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you so much, friends. This is the end of the video. I hope you really enjoyed this best and worst purchases of 2023. I had so much fun going 
over all the different categories, looking at my stash, trying to figure out did I actually get that in 2023 or was it carried over from 2022. But um, writing notes on like why it was the best and why it was the worst was really enjoyable too. And I hope to continue to do this in the next years to come. So thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear if anything in my worst list is actually one of your favorites <laughs> because we're all, you know, able to have our own opinions and not everything works the same way for everyone. So let me know down in the comments below if that was the case for any of you or if you would just like to share some of your best purchases too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.